Being the cynical man that I am, one of the first things to pop into my head when a TV series gets off to a strong start is, can you really use pigs to dispose of dead bodies? Wait, what? They will go through a body that weighs 200 pounds in about eight minutes. I mean, man, I really hope they don't fumble the ending with this one. Such was the case with The Penguin, a spin-off show about a periphery character from a Batman movie that I wasn't particularly enamoured with, featuring a protagonist that I didn't really care about. But wow, how wrong I was! The first couple of episodes drew me into the seedy underbelly of Gotham City right away, presenting a grounded and believable world of feuding mafia families, ruthless enforcers, corrupt officials and rain-soaked urban decay. It was like a day out in Glasgow, really. And with us every step of the way was Oswald Cobb, a wannabe crime lord with aspirations for greatness, determined to claw his way to the top at any cost. The Penguin definitely had my attention, but would it manage to stick the landing, or would it ultimately crash and burn? Are you serious? Well, I think you know the answer. The Penguin is one of those rare shows that comes along once in a while to prove that great storytelling, compelling character development, and strong performances from committed actors can still be married together with big budget prestige TV and the increasingly tired and played out comic book genre. Every episode had me glued to the screen, eager to know what was going to happen next, eager to peel back another layer of these fascinating characters, never entirely sure who I wanted to win, but always curious to know what their next move was going to be. I'm going to try not to give too much away story-wise, except to say that the season follows the escalating conflict between Oz and Sophia, the new head of the Falcone crime family. Both characters are revealed to be absolutely ruthless in the pursuit of their goals, both are intelligent and highly resourceful, and both are wrestling with their own personal demons and traumatic pasts. In Sophia's case, we get to learn more about the betrayals, abuse and imprisonment that slowly turned her from a good but naive young woman into a driven and sadistic killer, willing to destroy anything and anyone who gets in her way. And shit man, episode 4 absolutely does not pull its punches with this stuff. Believe me, you'll have a very different view of Sophia as a character by the time you're through. And full credit to Kristen Miliozzi for her work on this one, her ability to switch from a sinister and sadistic crime lord that can calmly murder whole families and hold an entire room full of men in fear, to a broken and vulnerable woman shocked at what she's been forced to become, is so natural and easy that you barely even notice the switch. Sophia really is a walking contradiction of a character, putting on a brave facade to the world around her, clawing her way to the top just so she can turn the whole system upside down, while quietly mourning the life and future that was stolen from her. Not only is she a more than worthy antagonist for Oz, but the more you come to know her, the more you realise she's not really the antagonist of this show at all. Speaking of Oz, good lord, this might be some of the best character work I've seen since Breaking Bads. Every time you think you've got Oz figured out, the show throws you a curveball that completely reshapes your understanding of who he is and what really matters to him. He's a man absolutely driven by his desire for respect and success, who desperately needs approval and admiration from others, and is willing to take insane risks and sacrifice anything to get it. Like, at one point a bitter enemy keels over over and dies from a heart attack right in the middle of beating the shit out of him, and instead of being relieved, Oz is actually pissed off because he got cheated out of the chance to gloat over him. His ability to improvise and think on his feet when the shit hits the fan saves his arse more times than I can count, but his cunning and ability to plan ahead and manipulate people allows him to play much stronger opponents off against each other so that he can take their place. And most importantly, he understands the psychology of the downtrodden because he's been one of them his whole life. The trusted henchman who doesn't get the respect he deserves, the second in command eager for his own shot at the crown, even the street thugs who just want a chance to make something of themselves. Once you know how to control and turn people like that to your purposes, you can take over an entire city. And he does. In a way, both Oz and Sophia claim to represent the same exact thing, burning down the old order and giving the people at the bottom a chance to earn their fair share for the first time ever. The vital difference between them is that Sophia actually wants to do it, while Oz is better at pretending that he does. And well, guess who comes out on top?
And be under no illusions here, Oz is most definitely not a good guy. After spending most of the season subtly encouraging you to root for him, with his limp and his ailing mother and his humble upbringing, the last couple of episodes completely turn the tables on you and show a very different side to the man you thought you knew. A man who's told so many lies about himself that even he's started to believe them. A man whose carefully constructed image of himself allows him to justify the most extreme brutality and gut-wrenching betrayals. A man who doesn't really care about anything or anyone except himself, and the final scene where he's achieved everything he ever wanted, despite enormous personal cost, really says it all. A different man might have been devastated by everything he had to sacrifice to get here, but Oz couldn't be happier because in the end, all that matters is his own success. Ironically, the very first scene of the show is also the most telling insight into his personality when he rashly guns down the new head of the Falcone family for insulting his dream of being respected and looked up to, knowing the problems it'll cause and the danger it'll put him in. But in that moment, he just doesn't care, because the thing he hates most of all is having his carefully constructed self-delusion threatened. It's a perfect example of the old saying, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. Colin Farrell gives the performance of his life in this one, not just playing the character to perfection under all those prosthetics, but really making you believe that he is Oswald Cobb. It's an incredible thing to watch, and his scenes with Vic and his mother really hit like a gut punch once you see where it all leads. Ultimately, The Penguin is everything I could have wanted in a show like this, providing a gripping, believable, brilliantly acted and tightly structured origin story for a villain that could so easily have been goofy and comical. And even if you don't give a shit about comic book stories and all the baggage that comes with them, it doesn't really matter in this case because The Penguin is strong enough to stand as a solid crime drama all on its own merits. It really does warm my heart to know that we're still capable of making shows like this, and honestly, if this is the level of sophistication we can expect from the Matt Reeves Batman universe going forward, then there might just be some life left in the Cape Crusader yet. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.